Everybody Hates Rand is a Wheel of Time podcast that will contain spoilers for all 14 books. So if you're anti-spoiler, stop this, read all 14 books, and come back. We'll be here, waiting. Our title is a joke and is meant to be taken as such. Everybody in this context refers to us and our cats. You are free to feel however you want about Rand. He's a fictional character. Please don't DM us. The world is a mess, dark one stretching out his hand. The dragon's reborn, the fire's been fanned, but everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Rand. I'll try to think of alternative titles for Knife of Dreams, <laughs> but all I could think of was Wife of Dreams for Parents. <laughs> um, I guess we'll just get right into it. This is Everybody Hates Rand, your friendly neighborhood Wheel of Time podcast. I'm Emily Jushaw. And I'm Sally Goodger. Hey, Ed. Come to yell at us. Ed's also mad because I was writing some thank you cards today for our patrons, and I traced the cat's paws on the back of them. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Tibble does not care about this at all. Tibble yeah. is, for all of his flaws, extremely malleable. 99% mm-hmm. of the time, he's just sort of like, yeah, whatever. Ed would rather commit homicide than be told what to do. So I was, like, wrestling him, <laughs> slamming his, not slamming, you know, holding trying, his little paw on the... Get his little... So Tibble, let me put, like, his whole arm, and there's, like... <laughs> This much just a little inch of Ed's pod. It's pretty funny. Oh, Ed, you can sit on my lap. You just, you gotta stay. You gotta sit and stay. And I'm not getting up to feed you. This is devastating for you, I know. Okay. We're talking about Wife of Dreams. We're talking about Wife wife of Dreams. We're here with um, some of the two worst people you know in the neg. In the neg. In the neg. In the second half of this prologue. Gross. Oh, God, Ed. <laughs> She just slimed, <laughs> slimed her. Could you just sit? No live evidence of how unmalleable I know, Ed is. He does not ever want to go somewhere <laughs> that he has not already. He's like a toddler. Yeah, you have oppositional defiance disorder too. <laughs> you both do. Idiots. Um, the first point of view in this half of the prologue is Alvierens, um, and we last caught up with her at the like tail end of crossroads mm-hmm. of twilight after she got um i was about to say evicted she got fired by a lady yeah <laughs> i wish she'd been evicted she was like get the fuck out just leave the white tower they just like push her out to yeah. the curb with her they're luggage. throwing stuff out the window or with like a one of those a stick with a little bandana, <laughs> bandana. <laughs> <laughs> all it has is three days rations <laughs> like get fucked but I said I would do that, I believe. Yeah, Alita would, for sure. Yeah, anyway, alvierin has been fired. She's been replaced as Keeper. She's humiliated. She's constantly having to go get penance, which just means she's being beaten every day. Which, like, okay, she's like, I have bruises on top of bruises. And I'm like, at some point, this would become, like, debilitating. Yeah. Your eyes to die. Like, if, if I don't endorse beating someone every day but if you're going to it makes sense that you would like heal them afterwards yeah but whatever the humiliation is part of it obviously yeah, for sure um and we also last saw alvirin getting told off by masana but then masana got told off in front of Al- alvirin by merdral dude oh, who yeah. gave alvirin the mark of cain I know we're joking, and it's not really the mark of Cain. It's just, like, an invisible mark that, like, claims her as his property or whatever. But she keeps, like, touching her forehead. And I'm just like, maybe it is, like, the mark of Cain. Like, in Supernatural. Is it invisible in Supernatural? No. I can't remember that season very well. No one can. Fair no, point. No one can remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sort of a fever dream after they enter the bunker. Oh, yeah, the bunker. The goddamn bunker. Because they got sick of redecorating their motel room set every episode. So funny. It is a pretty funny 
can see that they have like a home base and yet they're still going all over the country yeah after like like when one of the major themes of the show is their transience and their lack yeah. of home yeah you know? they're like have a bunker okay this why is it just a house you know why does it have to be a bu- whatever yeah but dean winchester does have the mark of cain he gets it from detective lassiter from psych oh yeah slash wow. the mean king the mean funny dumb king in gallivant what a career that man has know, had right anyway stay on target stay on target <laughs> Um, Alvira and we just see going through the tower after her daily beating to go to her room. She picks up a secret message hidden behind a tapestry. She goes to her room. She's, like, compulsively touching her forehead for the mark. Everyone she sees is, like, bullying her, like, girls in high school. Yeah. Which, like, it's the classic Robert Jordan conceit of look at how mean women get their just desserts you know yeah. it's hard to feel bad for alvira and when she has bullied literally everyone she's ever met but also like robert jordan stop yeah yeah you're so right every group of women we see in this series act like they're in middle school yeah like they have no concept of how to like treat yeah a it's colleague. like robert jordan's never interacted with an adult woman or something i don't know what's going on with him um, back in her room, she, like, decodes the message, which I think is just about how, like, this is now the day after the big Black Aja meeting, so when, uh, Talin didn't show up and was seen leaving the tower, in fact, with, like, her luggage, her little mm-hmm. kerchief on a stick, which I don't know if that's real or not, or if she's being hidden in the basement, and that was just, like, an elaborate <laughs> illusion, a facade of yeah. some kind. She's but... being hidden in the basement. That's what they said they were going to do to her. <laughs> Maybe they have a bunker down there. Every God week. Damn. God damn. That dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. It's probably Eric. It is probably Eric, our nemesis. <laughs> the listeners are like, who the fuck is Eric? We don't know. Eric is potentially our neighbor. Who knows, though? His name might not really be Eric. He does have a vanity license plate that says Eric, but... Yeah, and I persist it would be a very funny bit to have a vanity license plate that does not have That's your not name your on name. It. Like, imagine if I had a van- vanity license plate that said Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> it's like, hey, Brittany. I'd be like, who? Who's Brittany? Who's Brittany? It's my car's name. <laughs> That's his car's name. Yeah, maybe Eric is the name of the car. Well, that's my new... We'll start calling Eric the person Eric's dad. <laughs> Eric's dad. <laughs> Eric is the... I don't even know what type of car it is. It's annoying is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Eric's dad. Eric's dad is a bastard. Anyway, the Black Hours are like, what's going on with Talene? And Alvirin has her suspicions about the, like, group, you know, Yukiri and Docene, and she's now getting... These messages that are basically like, yeah, they sleep in warded rooms. And Alvaren's like, yeah, that basically doesn't mean shit because I effectively ensured that everyone in the White Tower is paranoid and hates each other. So everyone sleeps with yeah. wards. But she's just like, but I'm really hoping to like kidnap one of them or something and interrogate them. Yeah. So hashtag prayers for Yukiri, Docene, Pavara, Sien, whatever, all the ladies. Saren. Um, we then switch over to Galena. Tragically. This is a point of view. It's this is a point of view. Sure something. It's real, real rough. She's on a little ride um, on her horse just for recreational purposes. She's like, yeah, I can go on my horse because I'm this privileged guy shane but also if i am 30 seconds late thraba will torture me so you know freedom is relative yeah um and she's just like fantasizing about how she wants to kill everyone and make everyone pay and it's just like okay whatever Mm, yeah how her life is miserable and she just she like is like i'm given this much freedom because they know i'll come back because they have the oath rod and I need the oath rod to ever be able to channel without permission. Blah, 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 blah. Galena's life is so miserable. And I don't care. Not because Galena's a bad person, but because Robert Jordan has been slapping me in the face with the Galena's life is miserable shtick for the last six books. Yeah. And I don't care. 
Yeah. Anyway, Galena is riding along when Gaul steps out of the trees and grabs her horse and is like, hello. And she's like, how dare you? Don't you know I'm Thrava's special bitch and <laughs> I have this necklace and belt thing that proves it. And Gaul's like, meh? Huh? This seems like a strange, this is, hmm, hmm. Bunch of shado nonsense if yeah, you ask this me. this seems stupid. <laughs> I'll just kidnap this woman and find out what's going on. Yeah. So he basically like throws a sack over her head, or her hood I think, which I'm like, dude, nice big hood, because yeah. he also stuffs it in her mouth. <laughs> anyway, then Neald shows up. What a dynamic duo. <laughs> Gaul and Neil. And it's like, Gaul, are you sure that, like, we should, shouldn't we capture some more people? And Gaul's like, no, I think this one will probably, like, have some info for us. And Neil's like, why? And Gaul's like, well, she's an Aes Sedai. And Neil's like, okay. Well, she's not channeling, so not a big deal. Yeah. Anyway, Gaul's like, take me to one of your holes. And I'm like, what a pickup line. <laughs> They would be a good couple, I think. Gaul, Gaul and Neald. That would be very funny. Gaul unionizes with Grady and Neald. And they become a thruple. Yeah. Oh, that's ideal. If Gaul's gonna enter a thruple. It's Grady, and she had Grady and Neald. Grady yeah. and Neald. <laughs> Gaul's doomed to be in a, in a thruple, but yeah. whether it's with Bane and Chiad or Grady and Neald is a matter for debate. Yeah. Bye, Ed. Bye, Ed. Um, and Neald's like, yeah, I can make a gateway over there. So, Galena has no idea what's going on. She's, like, upended on over her horse, but she is taken for a small distance. Um, she's, of course, panicking already about getting back to Tharava on time. She's like, oh my god, they're gonna take me to their camp four days away or whatever, and then I'll be dead, basically. But then, like, 30 seconds later, they're like, we're here! And she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? It's magic holes. <laughs> And Neald's like, that's my grinder bio. This is usually name Magic Holes 69. It's like Magic Mike, but Magic Holes. Yeah, Magic Holes. Um, and uh, they, you know, have her horse be taken away and they take her to Perrin's tent where Perrin is conferring with Barrelane and the, like, main Gialdanen guy, I think, Eliandra's guard. Mm -hmm. Can't even remember his name at this point. Argonda? Oh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, not that Galena ever knows his name either, but I think Grady's also there. Yeah. Anyway, they roll up and are like, look at this Aes Sedai we found, but she hasn't been channeling at us, and she claims she's Guy Shang. We don't know what the deal is. And Galena's like, Parent Ibarra? What the fuck? Is yeah. <laughs> What's happening? And he's like, yeah, where's my wife? And she's like, your wife is under my protection and he's like okay that means nothing to me that means Where nothing to me <laughs> yeah your protection is meaningless to me i don't even know who you are yeah like, who are you bitch why would she's that like, matter my name is alice which i'm pretty sure is the exact same alias maury rain used back in eye of the world so yeah. just like is it they're like a is there, like, a night school for Aes Sedai about how to pass in public, you mm -hmm. know? No, like, there's a million Alices. Yeah, Just you're, use named, that. you're all named Alice, and you all are mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the public mm -hmm. and to everyone. And that's the trick to getting people to leave you alone. It's actually, like, uh, people remember mean people more, actually. Yeah, like... Uh, like, unfortunately, but yeah, if someone's mean to me that day, I'm going to think about it way more than someone yeah. who is nice to me. Anyway, it's just this, like, stupid conversation where Galena's like, yeah, I just need, I'm doing business in the camp. She's trying to, like, save face and not be like, I'm a prisoner, please rescue me. Because for whatever reason, she just wants to get out of this on her own. Yeah. Because women are stupid. Yeah. Um, and they just don't ever want a man to save them, especially a man-hating lesbian like Galena. Mm -hmm. God damn. And Galena this entire time is like, I can't wait to kill Fail the second I have the opportunity. You know, it's so weird. It's like, duh, duh, duh. We have no idea how much Perrin believes her about any of this. Yeah. But he does both discreetly and very not discreetly get some information from her that is information he needs and wants to plan this attack. For example, he asks, like, I've heard about um, 
drunkenness in the camp. Do the wise ones also drink? And Galena's like, no, the wise ones only drink water. And Perrin's like, check. I shall poison the water yeah, supply. Yeah, my plan to poison the water supply is a go. And, like, he's asking about, like, logistics. Do people go in and out of the city? Does she never fail sleeps? She lies and is like, no. And it's just like, she's not very helpful. It's a little annoying. I mean, everything about this entire scenario is yeah. annoying. We have no way of knowing whether Perrin, or I suppose we might have a way of knowing later in the book, but it is not clear to us whether... Perrin is taking her words at face value, whether he's fact-checking with other random kidnapped victims. Yeah. Da-da-da-da-da. It seems likely that if, like, they could f- kidnap a couple other guy Shane, especially, like, the guy Shane who have been, like, you know, who were are, who are villagers, mm-hmm. native, the native population of Malden. Like, if you could capture some of them and be like, give me all the info you know, they'd be like, yeah, fuck, just don't return me. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. Why would you ever, at this point, trust the word of an Aes Sedai? She's like, you have to believe me because of the Oath Rod. And I'm like, every time I've seen an Aes Sedai be like, you have to believe me because of the Oath Rod, she's Black Aja. Yeah. None of the other ones are like. Yeah. Just believe me. Just believe me, I can't lie. As they lie. <laughs> they <laughs> she lie. said, like a liar. I can't lie. She lied. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's like, it's this whole thing is very frustrating. One, because it continues this very poor characterization of Galena as just like a lesbian coded or canonical, I can't remember at this point, character who is so egregiously masculine that she can't ask for help or whatever. You know, like, it's... D- ridiculous it also puts her back in the hands of her torturers which seems silly like i i don't i really don't understand why galena needs to get out of this on her own i guess to try and avoid being outed as black Aja or whatever like if you are being that violently abused it kind of unless you have very intense stockholm syndrome it kind of just seems a little unbelievable to me that she would go back under any circumstances yeah, she's like, I. you just need to give me a few more days because I'm close to finishing my business, which is getting Fail or one of the others yeah. to get the Oath Rod for her. And it's like, you're now with this guy who you know for a fact led or was part of the attack on Dumai's Wells that absolutely wrecked your shit. Yeah. Even if you underestimate him and you're like, there's no way he can do this, I would be kind of like, hmm there's maybe a chance he could do this. And if I tell him, here's where your wife is in exchange, I need you to get the fucking oath rod for me. He'd yeah. probably do it. Yeah. Or do as, do it as well as anyone else could, you know? Yeah. It also like, I know Aes Sedai pride is like a really big deal, but Bear Lane is like, do you want to talk to the other Aes Sedai in the camp? And, and she's, she's like, like no. no, I don't want them to know my business. But it's like, if you told any Aes Sedai that, one of the shadow made you swear on a different oath rod. I think they would all be extremely upset about that and willing to help rectify it. Like it, the oath rod is apparently such a big deal that Egg's decision to make people unswear on it nearly gave Ramonda an aneurysm. You know, Jesus, like yeah. apparently it's a really big deal. So I just don't really get it. It's more decision making, particularly in Perrin's plot, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and only really serves to drag the plot out for. The rest of this book yeah like and it's more middle school girl behavior like yeah. galena's main motivation for not wanting to talk to these people seems to be that they are on the different side of the white tower schism oh yeah but it's like at this point why would that matter to you yeah like who cares you've been fantasizing about throttling alito with your bare hands so why does it matter to you but, yeah, it's legitimately just, like, there's a gas leak in Perrin's subplot, you know? Yeah. Everyone's behaving absurdly. Mm-hmm. Except, yes. <laughs> except Grady and Neald, who are just doing their best. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's just the usual. I, I don't know. Yeah, it just is, it's not worth, you know, beating the dead horse any further. But it, you're right, there is a gas leak. Everyone is behaving really irrationally and 
So we continue ever onward towards yeah. the the eventual attack on Malden. Ugh. We have not yet made our deal with the devil, aka the Shanchen, so why would yeah. we make any forward progress until that has happened? As Galena walks in, she like hears Perrin or Argonda or someone being like, Jesus, how hard is it to get a meeting with these people? Yeah. And I'm like, Maybe the first time it didn't go through, you should have stopped. Like, yeah. this is just telling me that you keep trying, yeah. which is even more humiliating for you. Yeah. How deep can your grave be? Yeah, and Perrin is just like, you know, there's nothing new about Perrin. He's dressed fancy. He's got his wolf eyes. He's like, tell Thale that on the day when the wolves howl or whatever, I'm coming for her. When the fog hits and the yeah. wolves howl. And Galena's like, yeah, of course I'll tell her. And it's like, Perrin, your wife's not stupid. If she can hear wolves howling, she'd be like, oh. That's my husband. That's my husband. That's my wolf boy husband. My wolf husband is on the way. Also, like, I know Galena is a total asshole, but Perrin is such a dick to her. <laughs> it is, like, unbelievable. <laughs> like, not saying she deserves, like, a modicum of necessarily, like, common courtesy given what she has done. But Perrin is basically just like, fuck you immediately. Perrin doesn't know what she's done. Yeah. Like. That's true. He's just like, for all he knows, this is a random captive. Yeah. I mean, unless he really does take her at face value that she's just an eye said eye wandering through this subplot but also happens to be wearing the uniform of all of the captive population. Like, how stupid would you have to be, Perrin? Yeah, to be To like, believe this. You'd just be like, oh, okay, there's something clearly fucked with this woman. Yeah. She's not polite to him either, but that's sure. par for the course with Aes Sedai. Perrin, at this point, it's interesting that his new strategy for that is just like, I'll be as rude to them as possible in return. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that'll improve the situation. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I think in generally, like, in general, I said I are extremely rude to the general public. So, like, you kind of reap what you sow, you know? Yeah. But, like, Perrin, you want to ask this woman for help. She is, even if she, like you said, take it at face value, she elected to be a prisoner of war. That doesn't mean she does not get treated like a prisoner of war. <laughs> She's obviously been going through it if she's held captive in this camp where you know they're committing, like, human rights violations whenever they want. Yeah, and also, like, you just kidnapped her and had her thrown over That's the back true. of a horse, blindfolded and gagged. So, like, you're not on the moral high ground very far up. You know, you're about three centimeters higher on the yeah. morality mountain. Yeah, like, which is left Bear Lane has... <laughs> which is left of Candy Mountain. Bear Lane is the only person acting sort of decent where she's like hey i said i can i like get you some fucking water like i don't know and galena's like no 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 the end is like galena's like i need you to punch me to perrin for some reason like again it's just people behaving so stupidly and perrin is like i will be extremely rude to you but i draw the line at domestic violence <laughs> or whatever i know but also she's like this is a big man yeah she says that so it's like if you're in a tent full of people and you're like, I need someone to hit me hard enough to, like, leave visible marks, I'm going to choose the person who's not also likely to shatter my skull. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's... Be like, ridiculous. hey, Neald. <laughs> hey, Neald. You flimsy motherfucker. Could you <laughs> With your me? limp wrist. He's like... Do, do, do. But Barrelaine steps up and is like, I'd love to punch an eye. <laughs> Yeah, and almost knocks her out, basically. Yeah, hashtag iconic barrel lady. Yeah, good for her. God, she vacillates wildly between being the worst character in the book and the best. I know. So frustrating. How does she do it? Uh, but she so did. Galena, of course, goes back to camp. She's late. Thorava doesn't care about her bruises. Thorava tortures her. End of. I just feel like... I know this is, like... Speaking of p p the gas leak is hitting me because I know this is an illogic is a logical is not a logical thing to say, but the amount of torture that Tharava does like what is fun about that to you? What is she? It's like how many hours? <laughs> yeah, that's another good point. How many hours do you have in the day to just torture p everyone who upsets you? We all have the same twenty four hours in a day <laughs> as Beyonce as Tharava torturing. <laughs> Galena nonstop, but like seriously, she's like, 
she's like jigsaw she's constantly coming up with new and inventive yeah. terrible ways to torture galena and i'm like i simply don't believe that galena is the first victim of hers yeah so has Thrava like left a wake of dead bodies behind her yeah like what type of sociopath is running through the shadow so it's stupid. really bizarre anyway we then switch over to ed who like wakes up drugged in a carriage between a bunch of Aes Sedai who have successfully kidnapped her and are taking her to the White Tower. This is a long point of view, but it doesn't really, like, need to be. Yeah. Um, because Egg is mostly just confused by the things she's encountering in the White Tower that we, the reader, are already familiar with. Mm-hmm. Like, Egg is like, Jesus, everyone's at each other's throats. The Ajas are, like, afraid of each other. This is super fucked up. What's wrong with Aleda that this is happening? And she's like, yeah, we already know all about yeah. that. We, yeah. We lived through it, unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway, they're all, like, the Red Aja is kind of in charge of her. And they're like, yeah, obviously Aleda's gonna have you executed immediately. And Egg's like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, um, you're supposed to be crying or something. And she's just like, no. No, I will not give you the response you yeah, want. Yeah, no. I am dignified. Yeah. I am dignity incarnate. And they're just like, okay. That's frustrating. And they're like, what ha- What did you fucking do to the harbor chain? And she's like, oh, I turned it into Quendiar, so fucking good luck getting yeah. anything past that. And she also finds out that Leanne has been captured, that Leanne successfully uh, transformed half of the harbor chain. Mm-hmm. Not the full one, so that um, only, they assume, very small vessels will be able to get through. Um, Leanne was was able to do this basically because she, like, inverted her weave so they wouldn't, like, Mm -hmm. see what she was doing or that she was channeling, which I think is something they learned from Megadian. Um... And, of course, she's like, I'm Leanne Sheriff. I'm of the Green Aja. And they're like, no, you're not. It's <laughs> identity theft. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. She's like, no, 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 really. And when they mention it to Egg, Egg's like, yeah, that is Leanne. She was stilled and now she's been healed. You could easily verify this by asking questions only Leanne would know. And they're like, oh, we don't have a working brain in our heads, so. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. No one, no one thought of that no one. No one thought of that somehow. <laughs> Um, but they bring Egg into the tower where they're greeted by Nicola, who is now a novice in the White Tower, and is like, oh, this is awkward. Yeah, and Nicola is like, I'm so sorry, mother. That's what she calls Egg and gets basically flicked on the nose. Yeah. When they're like, don't call her that. She's like, I'm so sorry. I thought they would let me do more channeling here and, um, oh, how the turntables. And now she's like a messenger. Yeah. No, she's just a stupid novice still. And yeah. Egg's like, did you think that we, like, didn't pick up our practices from somewhere? You know? Yeah. Like. Like, there's a re- there's a reason. Yeah. It's, like, worse at the White Tower. Anyway, Egg's just like, whatever, Nicola, you stupid asshole. Get fucked. <laughs> I'm not sparing you another thought. Um, but they are told that um, Egg is supposed to be taken to Sylviana, who is the new mistress of novices maybe not new she might have been the mistress of novices this entire time at Relata. i can't remember i can't either um i guess she must have been we haven't heard of any replacements she's new for egg anyway. new for egg yeah and egg is taken to see her um sorry i was trying to remember i remember egg oh, takes fine. out her handkerchief to like wipe some blood away and i was like where'd the blood come from oh she remember. gets slapped really hard a couple of times yeah. is that it maybe i don't know like slapped hard enough for your mouth to bleed is pretty fucking hard yeah this is katarine who was also at dumai's wells i believe oh yeah she's a real fun time yeah it's just a delight <laughs> Anyway, Sylviana is, um, Red Aja. We don't know much about her thus far. She seems, um, to be more reasonable than Aleda, you know? She at least has a head on her shoulders, um, and isn't acting in an unhinged way. It is unfortunate that she is the disciplinarian in a system which Robert Jordan has built to humiliate women. Mm Mm-hmm. But, you know, she takes her job seriously. She's like, I will beat you very hard because it reduces the amount of time people have to come to my office if they're afraid to be beaten again. Which, like, 
yeah, solid logic. Sylviana's in the unenviable position, in my opinion, of being the principal, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you shouldn't have to be a principal in a, like, in a society of adult women. Yeah. That's stupid. But Sylviana is not the type of character to question her position or anything like that. Not that anyone in the Wheel of Time really would. So all of that said, I think the system is gross. I think Sylviana herself is fine. I think it's interesting to watch her and Egg come to a sort of understanding and mutual respect. Yeah. No, it's a good point. I've never thought much about Sylviana as a character. Um, yeah, she's kind of bland. I only think of her at all because she's like slightly more important in Egg's arc as the books go on. Mm. As she was described, I was like, if I was going to cast Wheel of Time, I'd have her be cast as the, <laughs> the mean nun in Dairy Girls. <laughs> I think that would be so funny. Egg comes in and she's just like sitting there unimpressed. Unimpressed. God, I love the mean nun. Sister George. Sister Mike. George. Oh my God. <laughs> Sister Michael is the funniest. She really is character the best character on television. Um, yeah, no, I'm just going to be thinking about her. That is a really interesting sort of quandary. Not really a quandary because she doesn't seem all that upset about it, but it is an interesting position to hold as. Just what you said, the like a disciplinarian of adult women is just like a, like the mistress of novices is of course supposed to only be dealing with novices. But the novices themselves are at the very youngest, like what, 15 or 16? Yeah. And so that is also a little ridiculous. Like they are um, late teenaged. They should be behaving a, li- a little better. You yeah, know. and they're also being given corporal punishment, yes. which is just, like, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, don't hit anybody. Yeah, don't, don't do, do a, a hit. hit. Um, especially don't hit children. Yeah. But, so the the whole idea of it being, like, if we take the corporal punishment and just, like, put it on the side for a second, it's not unbelievable that there would be a principle for the 15 to 18 year olds or whatever. Yeah, sure. But the fact that Aleda is using this woman to routinely beat adult women is so bizarre. Mm-hmm. And everyone's just like, that's Aleda. <laughs> that's Aleda. <laughs> it's just all the urine and, and egg. Yeah. I guess. Um, But importantly, they Aleda is taking the stance that Egg has been used as a figurehead and therefore they are just going to treat her like she's never left and is still a novice. Yeah, she's being re-entered into the novice books, her Aes Sedai ring has been taken away, and Egg is like, without really articulating that this is her strategy, she hasn't like made it a strategy yet. Yeah. She's kind of like, (laughs) I am not going to, um... I'm not going to adapt to this situation by conforming to what they... Yeah. want me to be, you know? I am going to continue to behave as though I am the Amarlin seat, just the Amarlin seat in captivity. Mm-hmm. Um, which she recognizes immediately is going to get her in a lot of trouble, mm-hmm. with Sylviana included, and everyone else who comes in contact with her and is like, God, this is annoying. Yeah. Um, but it just becomes, like, ludicrous at some point, because... Egg will be getting sent to the Mistress of Novices like eight times a day. Yeah. And Sylviana's just like, again, I have other people I have to see. Yeah. Yeah. And so, one, I mean, it is a relatively effective strategy. You know, Egg's like, I'm not going to let them sort of discredit the rebellion by saying that I am not a true Amarillin seat, you know? Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm going to hold that line. That's very important. And I guess, you know, it is politically. It also becomes a way to just, like, completely fuck the internal workings of the White Tower. When yeah. she's just, like, being kicked out of every class, being sent to the mistress of the novices, yeah, like, eight times a day. Where Sylviana's just like, this is untenable. I cannot beat you eight times a day. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and Egg's also just like, what are you going to do? Beat me again? Like, yeah. at a certain point, it stops mattering. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to do the AO way of embracing the pain. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't care about that. But I do believe that if you're being spanked nine times a day after a certain point, you'd be like, what's 10 times a day? All right, whatever. Yeah. You know, it becomes a little bit meaningless. Yeah. So yeah, Egg is just waging psychological warfare (laughs) on the White Tower, which is pretty fun. Yeah. And will be fun to watch. Um, 
As she leaves, Sylviana also informs her, like, you're going to be given a very small dose of fork root, like, every hour on the hour to ensure you can't do big channeling, but, you know, you still can do enough to, like, be in novice classes and whatever. And you're going to be supervised pretty routinely um, because we're supposed to take you seriously. And Egg is like, well, you're the highest authority here, so I need to warn you that I'm a dreamer, and I had a dream that the Shantan are going to attack. And everyone's like, so Sylviana, who to her credit is like, noted. <laughs> yeah. I will pass it up the chain. The Shantan are a serious threat. I don't know how they would get here, but... Sure, I'll tell Aleda. Yeah, fair for enough. For what that's yeah, worth. Yeah, for what that's worth, seriously. Might as well tell the dirt. And then Egg is taken to a, like, novice room, and... Just back right, right back to the great hunt. Here we yeah. go. Except she's not roommates with Elaine or whatever. Um, and she gets ready to sleep, sleep and dream to alert Swan to what has happened. Getting right back to where we started, started from. from. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's the prologue. That's the prologue. I'm sorry my, if you've hear, heard my knuckles crack a bunch in the back. My hands are sort of falling apart with mm-hmm. the cold strikes. Yeah. Um, that's the prologue. We did it. We did it. It's a little less painful, I think, than the Crossroads of Twilight prologue. Um, I can't remember the Crossroads of Twilight prologue. I can't either, except for a two-year-old. Yeah, two-year-old. Bash ears in it, too. Yeah. Dobrain almost dies. Oh, that's right. That's why it's so painful. Dobrain, mm-hmm. my beloved. Um, and this prologue does, this prologue is, has the usual, um... Robert Jordan prologue flaws, the yeah. stuff with Egg, for example, and to a lesser extent, um, Galena are not necessarily good fits for a prologue. They're just yeah. sort of first chapter, second chapter material, you know, mm-hmm. we're just now getting into the book. Yeah. Um, everything prior to that, I think it's fine to have, like, E2 Rald routinely positioned in the prologue. Yeah fucking up the Shanshin because he's so far removed from everyone else but like the other stuff doesn't need to be Pravara is just a classic white tower point of view every time yeah. we're there I expect a point of view from her same with Alvirin yeah Glad I think is a fine prologue because again we're not we're we turning to white him cloaks a hundred years yeah but for the most part this prologue should have been much shorter Robert Jordan is just a criminal so that's true it wasn't he is a criminal I'm going to write up a rap sheet for him. <laughs> for your crimes. For your crimes. We'll hang it right above us and put little tally Writing marks as crimes. we record. Jesus, well, we should have started that 11 bucks ago. I'll, you know, I'll have to go back through all of them. <laughs> Stop. It'll be a 900-page rap sheet. Terrifying prospect. Torturing women. 600 pages. Torture porn. Of crimes. Yeah. But, yeah, you guys... We did it. That's the prologue. That's Knife of Dreams. We're That's done. Knife of Dreams. The end. <laughs> we're just gonna we're, we'll summarize Malden in five seconds or less. Um, oh. Perrin wins. The end. Perrin wins, but at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? Um, not that big of a cost. Yeah, really. apparently it's no big deal it's to MVP. just sort of like. Aram's dead. Who cares? Oh yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> forgot about that that's so forgot about Aram he was in the prologue yeah he's been kicked out of the tent for his psychological instability this cover is at least um accurate Mm. except because I guess Grady is there it just doesn't show Neald or Barrelane who I assume are behind (laughs) Gaul hiding behind (laughs) Neald is just like "Mm -hmm." Neald would fit perfectly behind Gaul. He's just, I imagine him so slim and... They call him Reedy, which I think is such a funny... Yeah, that is funny. Um, little... It's all muscle boy. and very skinny. You know, just a skinny little mustachioed man. I love you, Neald. <laughs> what a good character. Okay, we'll be back next week uh, with betcha. the first couple chapters um, as we deal with... Basically, more White Tower stuff and also, like, Rebel Eyes that I mm-hmm. stuff will be with Swan and, you know, Aleda, people like that. Um, and then I think we'll get, like, a point of view from all of the bad guys. You know, mm. more than one. Bad guy check-in bad time. Bad guy check-in, yep. So that's on the agenda. Until then. Thank you for listening. 
Thank you to Glenna McKenzie for our theme song. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon and our followers on social media. Yeah, you guys are the best. Yeah, anything to add? No. Nor. 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 Um, great. Do you have a sign off? Yeah. Um, today I have a work cell phone, which I hate. Mm -hmm. Do not call me. (laughs) Do not reach me. (laughs) Do not beep me. Um... And I'm doing some, like, grant monitoring. So, like, somebody called me today and I didn't know the number. So, like, I answered, you know, thinking it was the person that I'm monitoring, asking questions. And it was the most random phone call. It was a woman who worked at another um, county agency who was like, I need to talk to you about, like, a client in crisis at one of your properties. And I was like, how did you get my number? <laughs> what the fuck? I work in the grants department. I can absolutely not assist with this. And she's like, oh, I was just going down the employee directory on your website and just calling numbers until somebody picked up. And I was like, did you call property management? And she's like, yeah, they didn't answer, which is why I'm just calling whoever I can. And then I like looked at our employee directory. I am like two thirds of the way down the page. <laughs> so I do not know how many of my colleagues she called who were just like, no. <laughs> I mean, in this day and age. Yeah. Political calls left and right. Yeah. So I spent like 25 minutes helping this woman and I could not help her. I was just like, you have to call this person. Jesus. And she was like, okay. That's so sad and yeah, funny. It was <laughs> two thirds. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how many people did you call? <laughs> okay, everyone. Have a good week. Bye.